Hi everybody, today we're going to be making a DIY notebooks. You can use computer paper, sketchbook paper, or loose leaf paper. You're going to need a ruler to make the measurements, a thick paper for the cover of the book, some thread to put it together, or yarn, some needles to thread with, and a blade to cut with, or you can use scissors if you don't have a blade, but you definitely need scissors to cut the yarn or thread, and an awl to make the holes in the book so we can thread through them, or you can use a hole puncher. And I got this stuff from, well this I got from Home Depot. <laughs> this I got from Staples as well as this. You don't have to get the ones with the holes in it. This I got from Walgreens, but you can get scrapbooking paper from any craft store like Michael's. I got the needles and the thread from Michael's. And this is, was just laying around the house, so I don't know. But the blade and the awl I got from Blick Art Materials, but they probably have them at Michael's as well. And I will put the stuff in the description box as always. So now that I showed you all the materials, Let's get started. So these are the two types we're gonna be making today. Oh my God, my stomach. One with the hole puncher. And one with the, be quiet Tessa. One with the awl. Be quiet Tessa. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the paper and align it. And I'm going to make it seven inches long. So I'm measuring it with the ruler. Sorry, I got a little blurry. And I'm going to mark it at the seven inch mark. And it's gonna be seven inches for each piece of paper we cut. So that includes the copy paper, the loose leaf paper, and the cover paper here, the this neon color. So I'm measuring it out. And I want to make it seven inches, so I'm going to mark it there. And then I'm going to cut off the extra inch, like so. And make sure it's properly aligned. Make sure your ruler is straight. Make sure the paper is straight. I like to use the mat board that you see with all the lines and measurements on it. I like to use that to guide as well and I'm going to use my blade to cut off that extra inch. And keep cutting until the paper moves off like it did just there. Just now. So if you don't have a cutting mat it's really good to get one so you don't get a bunch of cut marks all over your table. So now I'm going to measure the paper, make sure it's even on all sides because the original paper size was 11 by 14 and I used it already to make a previous book so the measurements might be a little off so I'm making sure that all sides are straight before I proceed. And if you don't have a blade, you can use scissors, but I prefer using a blade because you get straighter lines. I'm measuring the half mark and I'm going to cut the paper in half. And I'm going to get some of the computer paper and line it up. Make sure every page is even. You can put like five or six pages together and cut them all at once. So you don't have to do one page at a time. Cut at the where I put the line for seven inches. 
make sure it's straight and then we're gonna cut it cut it cut it cut it and make sure you hold on to the ruler very tightly so that it doesn't slip while you're cutting the paper and that's why it's good to have a metal ruler because if you get the wooden one the edges will get messed up and then sometimes the blade slips onto the ruler so then it'll be all cut up whereas the metal one doesn't get damaged as as badly yeah make sure the pages are completely cut off and then sometimes when you have an issue like this you can just do a little cut at the end I'm going to cut the rest of the paper so the size that I'm doing is seven inches by five and a half inches but you can measure it to any size you want I just wanted to make a size that was small enough to carry so you can take it wherever you want to go. And then you can put it in a little bag. And you don't have to worry about having a big book. While I'm measuring all the sides, I'm gonna tell you the reason that I came up with this idea. I know I'm not the first to do this. It's just that um, I was thinking of doing this because I like to write down notes a lot for different ideas and sometimes to draw. And instead of always purchasing books, cause some of the books don't have, have it the way that I like it. So instead of relying on the store to find the right book that I want, I figured I could just make one myself. So I have most of the materials already to make a book. I just needed to get some thick paper for the covers and I had made some before years ago but those were for school projects so sometimes i look in the store for something and they just don't have what i want and then that's when i say to myself you know what i'm just i'm just gonna do it myself i'm still cutting and then just throw out the excess paper you don't, you don't need that <laughs> I dived right into the project without announcing first why I thought of it. So I'm telling you now while I'm while you see me cutting the paper up. So now I'm going to align the cover sheets with the other paper where the holes are. I'm gonna mark them so they can be aligned. An estimate of where they where they're supposed to be. Then I'm gonna grab the hole puncher and clip clip it to make the holes in it and I have both sheets together and the paper is kind of thick so I had to um, work around it like use the scissors as well it's a whole thing I, you'll see of course so you know worries we got this as you can see it didn't clip it all the way so I had to clip it some more and then that still didn't work for some of them so that I ended up using the scissors as well to get the rest of the paper off. I wanted to rip the rest of it off but I knew that I was going to look sloppy. So I said, no, let's be professional here. We're trying to make this look nice. So as you can see, I used the scissors to cut the ends of the paper that wouldn't come off through just using the hole puncher. And once I finish that, then it'll be time to align the pages and make sure everything is straight and the same size so that we can get the thread and bind the book. And erase any of the pencil marks. And when you do pencil marks, don't draw them too dark because then it'll still show some of it even after you erased it really hard. So what I did was I used all the sheets of paper for the inside pages, aligned it with the back cover page, and then I cut off whatever was longer than the inside pages. I mean, you don't need a ruler for this because you can already see the line of 
where you should cut but if you feel uncomfortable like you feel like you won't be able to make it straight like how I'm doing it then you can use the ruler I forgot to mention earlier you need bind binder clips to clip the pages together but I couldn't find any so I used paper clips using the ruler to make sure I don't mess up and I'm going to cut off that excess paper over there nice and easy and I like using the paper clips because the pages don't move and as always don't rush this stuff because then it's gonna look messy and you might cut yourself and we don't need that so don't don't do that and hold the ruler tightly so it doesn't slip get those clips again bind the pages together I don't know what where the accent came from but bind the pages together make sure it's even and now we're gonna get the thread. I already tied the knot, but I will show you how I do it when I thread again. It's basically over and under. And keep repeating that cycle. If you have yarn, you can do this once because it's thick enough to fit through the hole. But because I didn't have yarn, I have thread, I'm going to do this multiple times. Because if it's too thin, I feel like it's not going to support the pages and it's going to fall apart. But yeah, just go over and under in and out um, back and forth and make sure that the everything is nice and neat and then the excess behind the knot you're gonna cut off you don't want that part sticking out through the front so stick it through the hole put it in the back and let me just say you need patience for this if you are not patient you would probably just buy your own book in the first place <laughs> instead of making one but there's different ways to do binding for your books but I felt like this is the simplest way cut off the rest that you don't need after the knot and then I tie it two or three times and then I cut off the rest of the excess and then move on to the next thing. Like these needles here, they're easier to put the thread through and for the thread I like to use the one that I have here because it's thick. Now let's move on to the rest of the stiff. It's hard to get in, but once you do, make the ends of the thread meet. Wrap it around your finger. Tie it in a knot. And then tie it in a knot again. and make sure it lines up with the previous knot, which will create a thicker knot so that it doesn't slip through the hole when you're threading. And this looks weird, so I'm gonna do it one more time. Since it's going through the wide holes, but if, it's, if you're using the awl, you only need to do this twice. Right. I'm gonna thread over notebook for a second time. This is about to die, so I'll come back when the camera's fully charged. So I went over it like four or five, maybe even six times, and with the same 
the way I did it before and then I just tucked in the ends right here but I'm gonna cut it off so it looks better than this and if you have yarn you don't have to do it this many times you just get to do it once because it's thicker than the thread but anyway this is what it looks like when you open it up and now we're going to do uh, this book right here and make another one of these and show you how I did it.